Well, here we are, everybody, with the Leeds Combined Arts Social and Active Group. We're looking around some of the interesting architectural uh, wonders of Headingley, and this is actually kind of on the lower end of South Headingley, more like Burley, really. Um, and here we have the fantastic former St. Margaret's of Antioch, which is now the Left Bank Centre, which is a community arts and social centre. And um, we'll be going around inside, and despite the comparatively modest brick exterior, you'll find that when you see the inside, you'll see that uh, there's some superb uh, late Victorian Gothic stonework and arches and some very nice little details that you'll uh, see when we get there. Um, and on the outside we can see actually there are several stages of building. Um, if you come here to Lower Cardigan Road and have a look for yourself, you'll see that, um, you might not be able to see this on the video, but there are several different styles of brickwork, uh, different types, different colours, and um, this took place several stages of building. And there was originally going to be also, I believe, a tower here, which unfortunately never got built because the unfortunate occurrence of the Great War came along and they had to be content with this small exterior frontage. Um, but uh, nonetheless, it is a superb building and I'm sure you'll love to see the inside. It's like it, I wonder if it's been rebuilt, it looked, or whether it's well, been Well, there might be. Maybe we'll find out about it. may have been a big crack in it or something, and they've rebuilt it. Well, it could have been. I mean, there might have been some extra stuff on the front. I mean, this this obviously looks like it's quite recent, this, you know, yeah. sort of other stuff, doesn't it? Yeah. Um, which is think 120 years ago. It's not that long. It's just no, that's right. It's about 1890. So, so if they built all that off, it was only the built on when the church was expanding still. Well, what has been declining over a lot of, I mean, how many years it's still been Well, I, th I think, uh, we may find out otherwise, but uh, I think that um, the decline in church attendance didn't really start happening until after the Second World War, so it could well have been in the 20s and 30s because there was still yeah. a strong, you know, um, a strong kind of church kind of. I think there may have even kind of been a resurgence because you know, of the you know, things like the Millennium of the Service and all of that, which was a tremendously big thing in the early 20s. Mm. Um, yeah, it's one thing for remembering service, like things like, like they call it Christmas as well. well I just, uh, Oh, I'm sorry, I said it was just before that, sorry. Um, and it was designed by an architect called Temple Moore, who um, is quite well known in the area, who's designed quite a lot of churches, and you can actually do a Temple Moore trait um, in all of his different churches. Yeah. Is, he from, is he from Leeds then? I don't think he's from Leeds, but I know a lot of his churches are in the kind of Yorkshire area, so I think he was from Yorkshire. Um, and it was built largely by the local community, actually, by volunteers kind of coming together. Mm. Um, and they raised all of the money. Um, but his original design, and why the outside does look a little bit strange, um, his original design was supposed to have a big tower on the front of the building. Um, but they ran out of money. Wow. So um, actually, until the 60s, this wall, there was no porch, and this right. wall was just flat. There was no window right. as well. Um, but in because there was no even that up here, these all that was, it's just one flat wall. Wow, okay. Very odd, and actually I feel very dark, because we do, we do yes. get a lot of light from this yes. window, so it must have looked bizarre from the outside as well, because it's just a big flat wall. How did they get in the main entrance? This door was still the main oh, right. entrance, okay. um, but this, it, when, if you stepped out there you'd be straight on to... So, what was the, the thing is, they must have had to cut into the brick room. Was the brick completely remade? I don't think you know. I don't, I don't fully know the details. But yeah. The exterior, the side of the exterior bricks are all the original ones. That's yeah. 
so I don't know why the choice was made to do very reverent things like that. It's really Also, I, I noticed these circular windows here in the porch. Yes. They look very modern, don't yes. they? Do look yeah. definitely post modern. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So they would have been added in when that was built in the sixties. Um, it functioned as a church right up until the nineteen eighties, um, when the congregation had dwindled to about five people, which is not a lot of people in such a massive church. Um, so the congregation merged with All Hallows, which is up the hill. Um, and the, the building just completely closed down and um, fell into disrepair and um, just became derelict really. Um, and in what was it, about early, early 2000s there was a, a group again of volunteers, local community members that took an interest in the building. Um, one of them, Mike, is still one of our trustees and actually lives next door. Um, and they gathered a group together and they bought this building for two and a half thousand pounds. Wow. <laughs> However, they had to raise about a million pounds to get it to the point where it, people could really walk inside it again. A lot of the roof had caved in, um, completely overrun with pigeons everywhere. Um, a lot of our windows were broken, um, so it took quite a large job um, to restore it. Again, that was done by local community though, um, so it really it's got the have that in its heart. Yeah, yeah, they got um, English Heritage, I think, gave us the biggest block of money um, to get it running again. No, that was sort of all included. That's a rough guesstimate. Um, and then in 2007, I think it was, was the first time it kind of reopened again to have anything on, and that was just for Heritage Open Days. So the building was just open and open. started actually running events from here um, but they've just very very slowly grown and now we've got full programme and stuff happening throughout the year which is lovely um, and we got heating at Christmas oh, which, until then this is very very cold believe it or not there's heating on right now um, yeah. Yeah, exactly which which meant we just couldn't really do anything in sort of from this time of year onwards right through into Easter so it's really nice to be able to We've also got these leaflets, if you can find a few more, um, that we had. It was Heritage Open Days just this weekend. So really nice. We've got some leaflets that have got some detail. Is it this weekend coming or the one just, just been, got? Just been, I'm afraid. Okay. Okay. Um, so there's a bit more sort of written stuff about our history. Um, tend to take photos, feel free to wander, wander around as long as the door is open. Uh, if it's closed and you definitely want to go through it, come and speak to me because we might be able to. So we're extremely grateful for Thank you. Can I inside with that? Yes, you've done very well. <laughs> and can I just ask something I've got to
one of the things I noticed is that you weren't judging me. Thank you very much. Um, what he said, it's always worth my like, asking the questions. Anyway, that's some of these things. It's about the history. Well, here we are. We've been fortunate enough to be able to find our way up through a back spiral staircase, which has brought us up here to the gallery above the altar space. And um, there's a, a fantastic. Uh, in one piece, fortunately, and uh, we've got this marvellous uh, spectacle here, which in some ways is grander than some of the other churches locally, which have much grander exteriors. This has got quite a humble red brick exterior, and yet inside we have this fantastic space, which really, I think, even beats St. Michael's and St. Chad's in some ways because of the the, the, the breadth and the proportion of it, I think, is what actually makes this space so particularly good. And of course then at the same time you can also look up, see all the detail, and the more you look, the more detail you see. You see the roses at the apexes of the um, vaulting, and then also you have um, the passageway around the top, which um, uh, it's, it's called the Triforium, and that's by maintenance people to replace the lights and stuff. So, um, and also for you know building maintenance and uh, checking and all that kind of stuff. Um, so this is really being built as it was only less than a decade before the First World War. This is really a fabulous example of really um, from the, what they call the, the La Belle Park, the, 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 the 30 or 40 years before the First World War. This is kind of like the last flourishing of um, the great cultural achievements of the era, which was all wiped away by the First World War. So this is just marvelous that this was, that they were able to build this back there in the Edwardian era. And, and here we have it for today. We have still quite a few of the um, pews remaining, we can see. Um, restoration work's been done on the roofs, the side aisles, and even the centre, I think. And um, it's now used as a uh, social space that uh, people are able to appreciate and enjoy. And it's got this wonderful rose window at the west end so as the afternoon sun comes round it uh, illuminates the whole building and of course the nice gothic built windows on the side and um, there's even a small um, office administration space there which is very nice for the people who say that it's extremely distracting to be working in such a wonderful building as this but I'm sure it's very nice so um, it's just uh, very inspiring and of course down here we can also see the original uh, pulpit and canopy uh, above it um, and uh, the arches are a little bit plain compared to some um, but I think the uh, proportion is really what gives this um, its quite splendid appearance. So I think it's been a wonderful uh, opportunity for us to come and see such a uh, superb space. Oh,